Hey everyone, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and today is all about the low-end Ryzen 3s. But trust me, they pack a punch. Let's do this. The ASUS TUF RX 5600XT, a match made in heaven for those who are serious about 1080p gaming, incorporating advanced fan technology to improve airflow and silence without compromise. Each card undergoes rigorous testing and 144 hour validation to make sure it still performs to its best, even when pushed to the limit. Click the link in the description to find out more. So when Ryzen 3rd generation hit, it was more kind of the mid to high end that sort of, I guess came first. And for the most part, the Ryzen 5 3600 is probably still the best money kind of value CPU you can buy out there on the market from sort of AMD and Intel. I guess until today, and that's when these have hit, the Ryzen 3 3100 and the 3300X. Based on the 7 nanometer technology that the rest of the Ryzen 3rd generation processors have, but they do pack a little bit of a punch that AMD are claiming can out beat basically an Intel i7. Now we are talking about the i7-7700K. So yes, it's a little bit, I guess, on the older side of things. But you have to remember when that processor hit, it retailed for $350. I mean, that's, you know, not a small chunk of change. Even now, when you look on eBay, you're gonna find that it's retailing used for around anywhere from $150 up to about $250. The same in the UK about 150 to 250 pounds, depending on sort of, you know, the quality, if it comes with a box and all that kind of stuff. So what we've actually got here is two processors that both have four cores and eight threads. They're both seven nanometer technology. They both have all of the, the luxuries that you'd expect from a third generation Ryzen processor, such as PCI Express 4.0 support. And that's gonna mean a lot, especially with B550 nearly upon us, you know, launching in the next couple of months. And in theory should make these, I guess, affordable, it should make the whole platform affordable. In theory, you're gonna be able to make a PC that could probably rival, you know, even some of the, the higher end parts on previous generations and really give you kind of extreme 1080p gaming performance for around $600 total. I mean, that is just ludicrous considering what we had to pay back in the day for the likes of an i7-7700K and a graphics card to match, memory, SSD and everything on top. So let's talk a little bit about each processor and sort of see what the differences are between the two. Starting with the Ryzen 3 3100. As I mentioned, it's four cores and eight threads, and it has a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz. In terms of the boost clock, it can go up to 3.9 gigahertz. It has 16 meg of L3 cache and a 65 watt TDP. Because it is only four cores and eight threads and a 65 watt TDP, it means that it comes bundled with the Rafe Stealth Cooler, which isn't, you know, the greatest out there, but to be fair, it is better than some of the Intel offerings that we've seen, you know, even up until the latest processors from them. In terms of moving up to the 3300X, pay an extra $20, because you're talking $100 for this one, $120 for that, and you get a few differences in terms of the clock speed. So we still get four cores, we still get eight threads, but in terms of the clock speeds, we now get 3.8 gigahertz, and a boost clock up to 4.3 gigahertz. The same amount of L3 cache, same TDP, so I guess on the efficiency side of things, on the temperature side of things, and on the power draw, we should be expecting some pretty decent results from this. From AMD, the weird thing is most people skip probably two to three generations. So if you are on the first generation, moving up to third gen, obviously you're gonna get the benefits of that. But you are gonna be, I guess, in theory, getting a really nice kind of boost in the IPC. So before we even look at the benchmarks, I think really we're gonna be pitting these against the likes of a 1700X. If we're talking second generation, I think, Probably that sweet spot's gonna be a 2600, which you can still buy for around the same kind of price point as the 3300X. Obviously without the kind of third generation memory support, without PCI Express 4.0 and so forth, or even rivaling maybe the 2600X, which is a little bit more expensive. So uh, let's talk about the test bench. If you wanna see exactly what our testing methodology is, take a look in the description below and you'll see all of the platforms that you know we tested the first, the first and the second gen on, the third gen on, and all the Intel counterparts as well. But now I guess that that's out of the way, we should look at them glorious, glorious benchmarks. Let's run.
So there's the benchmarks, pretty much what AMD were claiming exactly, well, that's what happened, right? We're talking 7700K versus these processors, especially the 3300X. It was trading blows in some of the tests, but when it came to sort of, you know, the majority of them, whether it be rendering and workstation type stuff, or even gaming, it pretty much came out on top. For a chip that in theory is a couple of hundred dollars cheaper at launch than what the i7-7700K is, and still cheaper today uh, for a used part. Now, when it comes to overclocking, this is the beauty of Ryzen. I absolutely love it. I think overclocking is a little bit of a dying art, especially with the likes of Precision Boost Overdrive. Uh, you can find out more about that on AMD's website. But if you did want to overclock, it's pretty damn simple. You just increase the vCore up to 1.4 volts, keep increasing the multiplier in basically until it craps out, and then try and claw that voltage back down. On both of these processors, we just went straight in 1.4 volts, and we managed to get it up to 4.6 gigahertz, completely stable in a variety of different tests for quite a prolonged amount of time. So let's see exactly what kind of difference that means in terms of our synthetic benchmarks and also our real world benchmarks. So there we have it. What is kind of the takeaway from this? Well, really, if you're looking at building, say, your first rig, or maybe you're still stuck on something like an i7-7700K, and you're happy with the performance, but maybe you want some of the features and benefits that you can get from third generation Ryzen, like PCI Express 4.0 support, like better memory support, so you can go for faster memory. We ran this with DDR4 3000 megahertz. Nothing stopping you putting some 3600 megahertz memory with this and getting even better results above and beyond what we did. In terms of the overclocking, yes, it's there. Yes, you can do it. There wasn't really, you know, huge numbers uh, in terms of the gains that we got compared to sort of the temperature differences and things like that. So that's really down to you. Me personally, I just rather have precision boost uh, overdrive and just let it kind of do its own thing. So yeah, let me know in the comment section below. Would you go for the Ryzen 3 3100 or the Ryzen 3 3, 3300X? To me, the extra $20 or extra £20, depending on where you are in the world, I'd personally be going for the 3300X. It just seems to give that little bit better value. And it was, in a lot of tests, even rivaling a 2600X and again, the Intel i7-7700K. I guess this is probably the first processor review where there's been a bold claim from AMD or Intel saying, we're going to out outbeat an i7. And well, frankly, they did it. So yeah, I guess the new... I don't even want to call this low end because it's competing with the high end on older generations. Where does this belong in the market? Either way, it's exciting to see that there's more kind of choice, and more variety. You could build a system, $600, one of these parts, PCIe Gen 4, B550 when it comes out, that's going to last you pretty, pretty long in terms of the grand scheme of things. And you're going to have some pretty amazing gaming performance at 1080p. So there it goes. Right, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do and I will see you in the next one. See you later guys, bye bye.